Once upon a time, there were two twins playing for their Sunday league teams in the park. Little did they know, two scouts were watching them. After the game, one scout signed one of them for Boston United, and the other scout signed the other twin for Real Madrid. And so today, we're going to simulate through these players' careers to find out which one is the best. They have the exact same attributes, current ability, and most importantly, 200 out of 200 potential ability. The difference is how these players are going to be developed. Now, the Boston player is one of the best players in the Boston United squad. This means they're likely to start every single game and get a ton of match time under their belt. The Real Madrid wonder kid though, although being the best in the under-19 squad, has got to get through the under-19s, the B team, and eventually into the first team. So the big question is which player is going to develop the best? And it might come down to how long the Boston United player stays at Boston United for. The longer he spends at Boston training in suboptimal facilities and playing a lower quality of football, the more detrimental that's going to be to his development. But by the same token, the Madrid wonder kid can't spend too long in the youth team else his development is also going to be hindered despite the fantastic facilities. I do loads of experiments just like this on the channel, so if you want to see if these wonder kids can reach their potential ability, and if I can reach my potential ability of 100,000 subscribers, please do consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. So let's jump one year into the future to find out how these players have developed in their first season. Oh, and perfect wonder kid one from Boston is no longer at Boston. They've moved to Manchester United. Wow, they moved on deadline day in January for £15,000. Now, usually in previous experiments similar to this, we've not seen players move until season two or three. They get a good chunk of time at their first club to play for their first club. Not in this situation. I have never seen this happen before in my entire life doing experiments. So played 30 games for Boston, got six goals and five assists in that first half of the season before moving to Manchester United and uh, by looks of things playing in four FA Cup games, getting two assists along the way. So obviously they were trusted at Man United to play some high profile games. And clearly the game time has massively helped this player out. He has jumped up massively in attributes. In fact, it's just determination, flair, heading and bravery and natural fitness that haven't increased. Everything else has gone up from 8 out of 20 or 12 out of 20. That's really impressive. And so that's now resulted in a current ability jump from 88 up to 115. And looking at our other wonder kid, I don't think their attributes have improved as much. I think we're already seeing an advantage to Wonder Kid 1. Now, this Wonder Kid has played 38 times for the under-19, scoring 25 goals and 16 assists. Is that from centre? It's not from centre mid. Because look, they've developed on the right wing. So they must have been playing as, I assume, to score 25 goals and inside forward. That might explain why the attributes have not increased as much as the other Wonder Kid. If we look at the current ability, 109, so it's not risen as much as our other wonder kid. I suspect that's because all of this player's development has been to how to play on the right wing, like trying to get better as a right winger as opposed to improving things like corners or finishing or flair, things like that. So already we're seeing a bit of a difference here between the two players, but the Boston wonder kid seems to be better, although they have had a massive head start by being bought by Manchester United. Suddenly it's not a choice between Real Madrid or Boston, it's a choice between Man United and Real Madrid. So let's jump into see and five now, a few years into their development, and see how much they change. So our first wonder kid is still at Manchester United, and by looks of things, has broken into their first team. The physicals are absolutely insane. Mentals are getting a lot better, but the technicals, okay, they are pretty good to be fair. There's nothing massively stand out about them though but I guess because everything starts at eight out of 20, it's all gonna develop in a pretty similar sort of fashion. He's now 21 years old and has made two caps for England, which is pretty cool. So congratulations on your England caps. And has broken in to be a first team regular at Manchester United, made three appearances in their first full season at Man U, and then 22 the season afterwards. Looks like most of them came from the bench, or a bit 50-50 off the bench to be fair. And then eventually this past two seasons, they've become a regular starter. And so all of this, wow, means their current ability is now 185 out of 200. And at 21 years old, it's very likely this player will go on to hit that 200 out of 200. The wonder kid at Madrid, though, not as good. Nowhere near as good. I mean, the physicals are still pretty decent, not quite as good as the other player, but the mentals and technicals are nowhere near. 
nowhere near. And across the career as well, you can see they are not really being trusted by Real Madrid or even the B team to an extent. Now this past season, they've been playing quite a bit for Madrid, but 24 appearances off the bench. They're slowly starting to become a part of the Real Madrid team, but they're not playing very well. 6.64s, 6.77s the season before that. It's not been great for this player. And I think basically what we've seen here is what we kind of predicted right at the start. The fact that this player has been trapped in the under 19 and the B team for too long, whereas the other player playing for Man United now had just been given the chances to play and has developed really well because of it. I mean, they're still a very good player. 154 current ability. That's not too shabby at all, but it's way below the other player at Man United. Also reflected in the England caps as well. Only made two under 21 caps for England, not broken into their first team at all yet, which seems a bit harsh actually, given how good they actually are with 154 current ability. That should be enough to get into the England squad. And it might also be a case of this player playing on the right wing has not helped them out much at all either. Maybe that's helped hinder their development a little bit. I also think we can spin this uh, that it's a good idea for Premier League teams in England not to get B teams I'm really opposed to the idea of B teams in English football uh, and this this to me is proving it so no B teams at all in England let's jump to 10 years in the future though I want to see how these players have got on at roughly the halfway point of their careers. And so jumping 10 years in the future, the Boston Wonder Kid is still at Manchester United and still looking pretty good. This should be the absolute peak and prime of their career, really. I can't see them getting much better than this, apart from maybe in a couple of mental areas. Interestingly, determination is still one of the lowest attributes there at 10. Maybe what we should have done is given these kids 20 out of 20 for determination. That might have changed things a little bit. Although, if we look at the current ability, it's 199 out of 200. So maybe it's not affected them that much. But yeah, looking at this player, you can tell they are absolutely world class. But it's interesting that actually you can have some really low attributes and still have 200 out of 200 current ability. And yeah, looking at this player, they are absolutely world class. Also 45 caps for England and 30 goals from the centre mid slash attack midfield. It's pretty decent. That's a really good return. Also playing some incredible football here for Man United. Uh, never lower than a 7.39 average rating since properly, properly breaking into that first team. So so they've done really well. Our Real Madrid wonder kid though is still at Real Madrid and doesn't look quite as good but still looks very very impressive. I'm going to assume this player's got like 180 current ability plus sort of thing. Or maybe not though because they've only got one cap for England which is wild. Maybe because they're playing in Spain they're not being given the recognition they deserve for the England national team. But if you're playing for Real Madrid you'd think you get called up to the England national team. Particularly when you are playing most of the games well, yeah, most of the games has passed two seasons. Before that, it was still a little bit patchy, but they are getting some really good average ratings. So if anything, this Wonder Kid is a late bloomer for me. Current ability, 174 out of 200, and I can't see that being increased much more given that they are 26 years old now. So that might just be the top level of this player's current ability. But 174 current ability is insanely good still. That still makes them one of the best players in the world. So the fact they're not being called up to the England squad is mind blowing to me. So already just 10 seasons in, I think we can see that the Boston Wonder Kid is having the much better career despite having that slightly disadvantaged start compared to the Real Madrid Wonder Kid given the, the clubs that they were at. Let's jump another five years in the future though to see how they're getting on at the absolute peak of their careers, probably at 31 years old. This is when they're going to start to decline just a little bit. And as you can see, the perfect Wonder Kid one at Boston slash Man United is looking insanely good. This must be 200 out of 200 now, surely. Let's have a look at this. And it is 200 out of 200. They've got that last little bit of development squeezed out and they are the best player of all time. That does give me some hope for the Real Madrid Wonder Kid though. And looking at them, actually... They have improved a little bit, I think. I think we're going to see maybe about a 190 current ability player here because they do look pretty decent still at Real Madrid as well, which is quite impressive. Uh, if we look at this, 191. So there we go. They did squeeze out a little bit more current ability, but not quite as much as the other player. And interestingly, the Real Madrid Wonder Kid is actually quicker and better in the air. But the perfect Wonder Kid at Man United is much better physically, defensively, mentally, and actually a little bit technically as well. So they're very similar players, but the guy at United has done better, really. At least this guy's making some caps for England now. 47 caps and 28 goals along the way. And I've jumped another five years in the future for 20 years in the future, and they're both still playing, and they are both still really good. 36 years old, and they still look like this. This man is a machine. 
Obviously, some attributes have dropped down a little bit, but the current ability is still going to be really high, 185. That's wild. The Madrid Wonder Kid has dropped off a little bit more, I think, but I don't think much more. See, 177 current ability. They are still absolutely insane. And this guy's now got 102 caps for England and 51 goals. The other chap has got 149 caps and 82 goals. These guys are machines. I think what we've seen here, though, is that the Boston kid had a much better early career, and that set them up beautifully for the rest of their career all the way through, hence the more England caps and getting the 200 out of 200 current ability. Whereas the Real Madrid player was a bit more of a late bloomer going through the under-19s and B team of Madrid but eventually got to the very highest levels and ended up making 100 caps for England even though at 26 years old they'd made like one appearance for England or something like that so really impressive the second 10 years of their career wow the perfect wonder kid one didn't win a single Ballon d'Or but the Real Madrid wonder kid won two of them that genuinely blows my mind uh, I, I was not expecting that in the slightest I thought we'd see the other guy just win Ballon d'Or after Ballon d'Or, particularly at 200 out of 200 current ability. But no, the game just loves strikers, apparently, because you can see uh, the guys who won it before, attacking midfielder, I suppose, attacking midfielder, striker, striker, Pedri's at uh, centre mid, to be fair. So actually, Pedri's the outlier there. Jeremy Pino, attacking midfielder, Vinicius Jr., attacking midfielder, Foden, attacking midfielder, Mbappe. So basically, it just rewards players who score lots of goals, whereas these guys are centre mids, so they're not going to do that quite so much. However, of course, Perfect Wonder Kid 2 at Real Madrid has been playing on the wing quite a lot. He can play on the wing, so maybe that's why he's won some Ballon d'Ors. But this is, shocks me massively that we didn't see Perfect Wonder Kid 1 from Boston win a Ballon d'Or. There's no justice in this world. But neither of them won Under-21 Footballer of the Year. Neither of them ever won Next Gen Awards. Perfect Wonder Kid 2 won two Goal 50 Awards at the very end of their careers. Perfect Wonder Kid 2 did win a World Footballer of the Year, which is a slightly different award, but Wonder Kid 1 didn't. World Player of the Year, which again is a different award. That was won twice by Wonder Kid 2, but not by Wonder Kid 1. And this blows my mind. I'm looking at the World Team of the Year, the average for all 20 seasons that we've done, and Perfect Wonder Kid 1 is not there. And the only reason I can think that they're not there is because there's some sort of issue with Man United. Obviously, there was a lawsuit a long time ago with Football Manager, which maybe just means that they can't get picked for these awards because of some sort of licensing thing, maybe. That might be it. But that's the only thing I can think of, because this seems wild that they're not in this award at all. And that makes it very difficult to come to a conclusion as to who's had the better career, because clearly in terms of awards and recognition, Perfect Winner Kid 2 at Real Madrid has dominated that one. But looking at current ability and appearances and how well they've played across their career consistently, Perfect Winner Kid 1 seems to have been the better player starting off at Boston. So I don't quite know who's been better. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below that subscribe button. In the meantime, make sure you go and watch this video where I made the perfect strike and football manager to see how his career pans out.